Okay, so now I have all the flow hive pieces and there have been several videos already on YouTube where people are putting them together and demonstrating how to put them together. So I'm going to go ahead, put this one together, and then I'm going to tell you what uh, some of my observations are. I want you to notice the misalignment in some of these dovetails right from the factory. And I'll give that a very good grade. So right out of the box, some of the dovetails just don't line up. So if you line up this one, you're going to come down here. Look at the cuts. This is not a quality dovetail. And they just don't match. And as you can see, I am following the assembly guide. So if you line this part of the dovetail up, look how far off we are down here. Amazing. I have to take a trip to the wood shop. And there are supposed to be five of these short screws, one for each of the pull knobs, and they only included four. And here we are after we've dressed up the dovetail joints. They finally do fit, but they were 3 30 seconds off. Now with it clamped together, you can see how well they do or don't marry together at the dovetails.
Okay, so now you see that we've got the box all assembled, had some problems with the hardware that was provided. Screws were not long enough and wouldn't hold the little pull knobs. And other than that, we're okay. We shaved some of the dovetails to make them fit correctly. And now we're ready to put in the actual flow hive uh, frames. Now looking at the frames, I was really impressed by how uneven the cells are really. Um, not flush like normal drawn out comb. And they're all compartmentalized together, so of course you can separate them. But very interesting design. And the plastic that it's made of actually feels kind of soft. It feels a little bit waxy, to be honest but it is just plastic. And of course, all the wax frame components, which are made of plastic, are strung together and held taut by this stainless steel cord. And there is an adjustment screw at the end of the frame that makes sure that you can push it nice and snug up against the end that you open for observation and for honey extraction. But the way my box ultimately went together, there was no reason for me to use these adjustment screws. Um, each frame just fits snug right into it, and I have the seven frame system. As you can see right out of the box, all of these frames actually fit nice and snug. There's no place that they don't slide back and forth. If it were not snug, if the frames were not snug against the accessible side of the box, then you would just make a screw adjustment here to push the frames this way. You want to make sure that there's no B space there. And as you can see, these things really are flexible. Very easy to pull out, but it's nothing like any frames I've used in the past, of course. Now, for the rest of my kind of evaluation of the system, I'm going to take this and put it on an actual 10 frame Landstroth hive. Just putting a bottom board on there, standard 10 frame. And a lot of people have complained about the plastic and the, the new flow hive system. I've been using Pirgo frames for more than 11 years, and they're not a problem for my bees. And then we'll just put this one, put the flow hive right on. It is a little bit smaller in outside dimension as compared to the standard Langstroth Deep. Then we'll just put a standard cover on it. Cover's got a little burr comb on it, but we don't mind. And the cover overhangs the uh, flow hive a little bit, so it is a little larger. And then we'll just put a standard B cover on it. Now the telescoping top on the standard Langstroth hive does settle down a little bit too far for the um, flow hive because there's not room to pull off that uh, top access. And as you can see, the telescoping cover is uh, tilted a little bit because it's resting on the actual knobs of that top access plate. And remember that I'm just giving you my first impressions of this uh, flow hive box assembly. I haven't actually had it out in the bee yard, and uh, we're in February, 
It's 10 degrees outside and it's snowing, so all I'm doing is prepping things in advance of hopefully what will be a great spring. So as I've already mentioned, the uh, telescoping top for the, the box prevents you from pulling off this little top piece. Even bumps that uh, retainer a little bit. We'll pull it off. Now I'd just have to do something to raise the uh, cover or, you know, put a shallow super above it rather than just leave this as the top box. So it may not be the best thing to have it as a top box. So we'll just try pulling out just as you would. Here's the metal strip um, that keeps the bottom of your frame rigid and of course the top so that you can have access to the actuator access for your key to go in. So let's try that out. As I've already demonstrated in the assembly portion of this video, I guess you know that I'm not uh, super excited about uh, the quality of the workmanship on the box or the hardware that came with it, including hardware that was just plain missing. But uh, I do think the internal components, the frames themselves, are consistent, well-made, and seem to be exactly what they advertise them to be. So everyone has seen the way the keys work. Um, I wish they had a thing on their website where they would sell you just one key. Um, right now they sell the entire assembly and you don't seem to be able to get um, individual parts like the key. I'd like to get two of these and use them together. Um, so the frame that you're going to work, there's a pull plug. Now, I always wonder, looking at the videos on YouTube that I've seen so far, um, when they're pulling off this access cover, wouldn't the bees just work from inside and use propolis and seal everything up and make it impossible for you to pull this cover off? But now I realize, looking at it, there is no bee space back here at all. The workers can't get to this end of it, and they can't get between the flow hive frames, so they absolutely can't propolize the joints back here. So it is going to stay pretty accessible, and it's not going to be glued up by the bees. The other thing that occurs to me when I'm looking at this, if you had a bee cottage or a work shed where the back of your beehives actually extends into the shed, and it's pretty popular in Germany, in fact, um, you would be able to work with the bees from inside. You would be able to extract honey without ever having a bee fly into your space. Um, you couldn't, of course, pull frames, but you could have all of these open and draining um, inside some kind of work shed and uh, not worry about the bees getting into the shed at all, and of course not having to clean the bees off of these frames while you work. I don't think this is going to be a fantastic uh, industrial scale um, honey extraction method, but as far as the way these things are put together, I'm really interested and I can't wait to see how they're going to work uh, when we get them out during that first nectar flow. Now, if you'll notice, the way this thing goes in the bottom, when you put that tube in there, there's a little tongue at the bottom of it that lines up and it actually goes underneath the bottom of the flow hive material so that there's no damming that goes on as the honey would flow out of this tube. It's pretty interesting. So it puts it actually below that. And they say any honey that drains down that you don't extract or drain into a jar and collect it just becomes accessible to the bees. And as you've seen, when we took these frames apart, you could flex them so there are gaps between them. So that um, allows the honey to go right out, and I'm sure the bees would uh, reclaim that right away. And the plug that goes in here, it's not a twist lock or anything. It's just a push plug that goes in. So, I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. And of course, the top part, it only goes in uh, when this is in the closed position. So you won't forget and leave the cells open as you would when you're going to be extracting honey 
So in order for this plug to go back, they have to be in the correct position. Let me go ahead and take that inner cover off. And as you can see here, the clear plastic uh, plugs at the end are recyclable material. There are statements all over the uh, FlowHive website that say that uh, all of their plastics uh, that are used in these components are food safe, that uh, it could even be irradiated a couple of times before that material would start to break down. And you can just wash them with uh, warm water if you need to, but they claim that you generally don't even have to wash the components. And the other thing that occurred to me is if you actually had these inside some kind of honeybee shed, you could, if uh, all the cells of course were full and all of the cells were capped, I wouldn't extract any honey unless it was all capped because that means that it wouldn't be ready and properly dehydrated. But you could have a whole series of these draining out and not just into jars. I suppose you could drain them into a trough and run it all into a bucket. Uh, it's going to be a very lengthy process to extract honey out of this. And I would do this on a really hot day. Uh, obviously, honey flows quicker on a hot day, and uh, you would extract more in less time. I also like the idea that I don't have to pull the entire frame and extract honey or, you know, cut the caps off of all of them. I could just do one or two, extract a quart of honey or something, and then just close it right back up. So you don't have to get in there and do a full, you know, all afternoon extraction process. Although let's not pretend that this is going to be quicker than putting in a centrifugal uh, extractor. The centrifugal extractor is going to pull a lot more honey in a lot less time. But you're also going to be scraping all the caps off and doing a lot of secondary work. Plus you have to haul them to that location. Now I think I'm just going to give you a real close-up look at how this thing looks when the uh, cells are being split so that you could do the extraction. Put the key in all the way and then you turn it like this. And that should be the open position for the cells. And let's say that you had some crystallized uh, or solidified honey in there and you needed to get it out. I would put it in this position, take the whole frame out and then I would put it in hot water until that stuff rinsed out. Um, and then, of course, when you're through, after the honey is drained, you put your key in that top access, turn it again, and the cells should be restored to their partially closed position. There are gaps around them, and I think the bees uh, use, again, propolis and seal them up, and they go right back to work in filling those. Another thing I think about is, you know, when we extract honey in the traditional way, we scrape a lot of the wax off. Some people even extract a whole comb and make chunk honey. Um, the bees use a lot of their resources to restore and draw out the new comb. I think that's pretty well eliminated here. All they're going to replace is the cap wax and it'll go immediately to work in filling these cells again. Um, and as we all know in a nectar flow, uh, you could draw honey off and four days later these could all be full again and you would have to measure in your area how much honey you can comfortably take off and still leave enough resources for your bees. Especially in the fall, you never know what's going to happen. When I'm putting this thing, uh, putting the frame back in, of course you wouldn't normally take it out to actuate it and uh, extract honey. But uh, I also noticed that uh, the cells are all angled towards the center, so the nectar flows to the middle. I mean, uh, it seems like a pretty pretty interesting design. Now again, I'm not here to tell you that this is a great thing to have and I'm not telling you that it's a terrible thing to have. Uh, my idea as always with honeybees is if there's something new going around, um, I like to get a hold of it, learn about it and see how it works for me. So the next video that I post regarding the flow hive will be uh, how well my bees accept it and how the extraction process goes and what I really think of it in, uh, in the bee yard. Now the other thing I want everyone to think about is the cost of one of these things. When it first came out on Indiegogo, I jumped on that right away and uh, I paid $517 for the seven frame system, uh, including shipping. And uh, 
As a lot of you already know, they uh, had their Indiegogo campaign and uh, I got an email about it and I bought mine and they set a record in 24 hours for the most ever obtained in an Indiegogo campaign. And by the time that campaign was closed, they had earned $12,487,345 uh, for their campaign. So obviously this thing has a huge amount of interest. Everybody wants to know how it's going to work. 2016, when the spring hits here in the United States, uh, a lot of beekeepers are going to be using it, even though uh, some people are on YouTube telling everyone that uh, the only people that are going to be interested in this process at all are going to be novice beekeepers or people that are just really ignorant about bees. Well, you know what? I'm not personally ignorant about bees, but I also don't want to be ignorant about the system. Now let's just talk the talk a little bit. When it comes to starting out with honeybees, the flow hive is a very expensive deal. Uh, as I said already, I paid over $500 for it. And let me tell you, when you get into startup beekeeping, you could go to a company like betterbee.com, you could buy a beginner bee kit. That startup kit includes two deep supers, a bottom board, an inner cover, an outer cover, a bee outfit, a smoker, a veil, everything you need, including a book on how to raise honeybees. And that's for $354.50. So if you're looking for bargains, I've seen people post on YouTube and say, how much am I going to get from the bees and how much does it cost me to start up? If you're looking exclusively at what it costs to raise bees and you're looking at how much money you're going to make off of all the honey you're going to sell, my advice to you is don't even begin with beekeeping. If you're not in it to learn about bees and improve the environment and help pollinate or help improve the, the health factor of the bees and the health factor of people, if you're looking for a get rich quick uh, mechanism and if you think the flow hive is your method for getting a lot of honey and just cashing in on honey bees, I say run. This thing is expensive. Uh, it's a new technology and it is novel and I think it's interesting. I'm not for it, I'm not against it, I'm not here to blast it, and I'm not here to support or launch a campaign for them. But I do think you need to understand that if you're not already interested in honeybees, and if you don't already understand the very complicated uh, goings on in a bee colony, then I would suggest that you pull back, go to school, learn about bees. And if you're actually afraid of being stung by a bee, quit now, you're gonna be stung. Every beekeeper, get stung by a bee. So if you're not interested in the bees and what they do for us first, then don't take the leap and spend all this money. I went on the FlowHive site. Remember, this is a seven frame FlowHive system. Right now, that is $527. If you want a six frame, it's $469. A four frame is $397. And a three frame is $339. So for roughly the cost of a three frame flow hive system, you could have the entire setup, including two deeps, two medium supers, and an entire kit from a company like Better Bee. And I'm not just here to endorse Better Bee. You could go to other places as well. But you could be set with the entire deal, including frames, for $354.50. So I would really think it over if all you're thinking about is how much money can I get. I bought it and I'm interested in it only so that I'll understand it and know about it so I can answer people from a direct experience perspective. Thanks again for watching and I hope you continue to learn about honeybees and chickens. Thanks.